If they'd watch prom night, they'd save time. There's a formula to it, a very simple formula. Everyone's a suspect. Now everyone knows this scene and horror fans have this quote memorized, but when you sit down to actually think about it, what Randy says rings true. Slashers do tend to have a very simple formula and that formula originated by the one and only Prom Night. Releasing in July of 1980, it was one of the first films to really try to ride the coattails of Halloween. When you think about the birth of the slasher genre as a whole, you have proto-slashers that started it all, like Psycho, Black Christmas, and then Halloween is the turning point. After that is when the Golden Age started and the formula started to become replicated. Films like Friday the 13th, Prom Night, and Terror Train were the first to arrive and cemented that blueprint. Eventually, the slasher genre would start to become oversaturated in 1981. And if you're interested in hearing me talk about the wonderful horror films of 1981, well, I covered them all. Now, even though I'm a self-proclaimed expert of horror films from 1981, and I think 81 is the greatest year for slasher films, every slasher that came before tends to fascinate me the most. Prom Night is a staple of the genre and has been a huge influence for almost every single slasher that came after it. But personally, I don't have very many good memories with this movie. When I was a teen, my friends and I used to do all night horror movie marathons where we would rent three to four movies and watch them all night long. I was still a young horror fan at the time, so my knowledge of the genre was lacking, but I remember clearly that Prom Night just didn't impress me. I remember guessing the killer about 10 minutes in, then I fell asleep through most of it, but woke up at the end and realized my prediction was right. And I haven't seen it since. So 15 plus years later, will my opinion change? Is this like a vintage, complex wine that I can appreciate now that I'm older, or is it just a product of its time that hasn't aged well? I'm excited to find out, and I hope you are too. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Prom Night is your typical early slasher with a mysterious mass killer chopping up teens who do drugs or have sex. During the last act of the film, we get a showdown with the final girl and the mass killer is finally revealed. Our final girl, Kim, is played by none other than the legendary Jamie Lee Curtis, so that already gives the film a ton of clout. Kim, her brother, and her parents, one of whom is the school's principal, played by Leslie Nielsen, are grieving the death of Kim's younger sister, Robin. You see, when Robin was just a kid, she was murdered. Cops believe that Leonard Murch killed her since he lived close to the crime scene. When going to ask him questions, Murch tried to outrun the cops. He totaled his car, he caught on fire, and he is now a catatonic patient at a mental hospital. Well, six years later on prom night, Murch wakes up, breaks out of the hospital, and tries to kill again. It is the night he came home again. Now all of that would be totally fine. You just mark it up as a Halloween ripoff, call it a day, but that's not how things actually go. We know in the first five minutes that that subplot has nothing to do with the rest of the film because we already know how Robin died. We open on some kids playing a game and accidentally pushing Robin out of the window to her doom. Then they play I Know What You Did Last Summer and swear to never tell a soul. Never ever tell anyone. No one but us will ever know. So the merch subplot is complete BS and is only in the movie to be yet another red herring. And trust me when I say this, there are a billion other red herrings in this movie. Everybody's a suspect! You have the school's groundskeeper, Mr. Sykes, some bullies, teachers, and even the principal slash father himself. Anyone could be the killer. But in reality, it's not much of a mystery. After years of not remembering anything about this movie, I again called it. There's one logical answer and the film is bafflingly bad at trying to keep it a secret. They spoil it in the first 10 minutes. Anyway, six years later, the killer is out to kill all the kids who killed Robin on their prom night. Yep, it's that simple. 
It being one of the first slashers, though, it didn't have to go crazy with it. A movie that came out later, like Happy Birthday to Me, which was released in 1981, can get so complex and muddied that it almost ruins the validity of the film. Prom Night, on the other hand, is beyond simple with little twists or turns along the way. If you've watched the slasher before, then you know who the killer is about five minutes into the movie, and the rest of the time is just going along for the ride, and what a ride it is. If Friday the 13th is like a roller coaster, then Prom Night is a fancy version of a merry-go-round. It's flashy at moments, but there's not a ton of thrills. Not a lot of action takes place for the majority of the film. We just get some interesting characters and some bullies. It honestly feels closer to a teen drama during a large chunk of the runtime. Now, some horror fans may be bored by this bit, but when the killings do actually start happening, the stalking scenes may be even more boring than the teen drama bits. One death went on for so long. It went from a bathroom, to a classroom, to a garage parking lot, to a storage closet, to a hallway. Just a bit too long by today's standards. And that's what it really comes down to. As an audience, we've been desensitized. Even a year later, in 1981, so much had changed that the slow stalking and barely any killings was already outdated. I'm sorry, but audiences don't want to sit through a whole dance number in a slasher film anymore. Now, I don't want to say that Prom Night is bad because it's not. It's actually brilliant, but it is a tad bit bland. Other movies would take the base of Prom Night and add to it. I like to think of Prom Night as rice. Rice is a wonderful component to so many meals. You can add many different ingredients to rice to create delicious new dishes. Adding to rice, there become so many possibilities, but rice on its own as its own meal by itself is fine, but it's a bit bland. Now I could go into a lot more details behind the film or even talk more in depth about the film itself, but I just wanted to quickly go over my two cents on it. While I enjoyed my second viewing a lot more than the first, Prom Night still has some major problems for me. Other films like Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and even My Bloody Valentine still hold up today, while Prom Night has trouble standing on its own without taking into consideration its impact on the genre. With all that being said, Prom Night is a historically important film and has some awesome moments. It's a beautiful film, and the score is wonderful. It was composed by the same guy who made the Black Christmas soundtrack. Both films are from Canada, so it makes sense. The gore is few and far between, and the stuff we do get is actually pretty gnarly. I recommend Prom Night to anyone who loves the slasher genre. Even if it doesn't hold up to the crazy slasher outings that we currently have, it's still a classic, and it has prime Jamie Lee Curtis in it. She easily makes this a much better viewing. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. And that's all I have for tonight. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and normally I would say sweet dreams, but my wife said no more of that, so totally do. Am I in the minority for thinking that Prom Night is a tad slow? Let me know in the comments below what you think about Prom Night. I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments below. Bye.